restoration video. Today I'm going to be helping my dad and this is video 26. In this episode we're going to be finishing off the subframe and to do that we need to make our own brake pipe so that's what we're going to show you in this video. So this is what we're going to, to make up our own brake pipe. We've got the brake flaring tool we've just went for a Clark one. Cutting tool for the pipe. The brake unions and the brake pipe itself. Right, cutting the pipe. Three wheels, two to set the pipe on and a cutter. All it does is cut around the circumference so it fits on. Just make sure it is lined up. Tighten it down till it's all touching. Tighten this bit here, but not too much, just so you've got some resistance. Once you feel it slightly cutting into the pipe, just turn it. And if you can see, just in here, all it's doing is working its way cutting the pipe there. So once you've done that a few times, tighten it a little bit more. There we go. So sometimes depending on how it cuts you can get a nice clean cut like that. Other times it squashes it slightly and you can see it leaves a bit of a hole. So when it does this style it just means it's been wobbling about slightly. And what I just use is one of these just to basically Go in here and just countersink out the end just to open up the hole. There you go. Just opens it up. Right, so we're needing to get the right length for the pipe we're looking at. The pipe we're looking at, we kept before. As a, so we just use the template because it makes it a lot easier. Like I so say, you can buy these, but yeah, we're not doing that. So this is the one you can see that came off the subframe. So hold it down here. So this was the one that basically attaches the two um, sides of the front brakes together. So it goes along the subframe, attaches up here and onto the flexi hose and the unions either side. So we're going to use that as a union. As a union? No. <laughs> we're going to use that as a template to make the other one. The only bit we need to add on for lengthwise is the end of here where I cut it. I measured that and that's another inch to be added on the end of there. So you can, I've seen people just bend the pipe round it just to get a rough shape. The way I usually do it is just by getting a piece of string on one end and moving the string round and then that will give you an overall length that you need to cut from. Right? And then what you do is you just feed this down. So what we're going to do, feed this down here. Right? And just make sure you keep a hold of it at the end. So, right, you can let go now, right? Let go of that end because I've got to hold it here. So see this bit here? Yeah. Feed that down. Well, just follow it all the way down. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yep, so you've got a tight hold of that corner there. Yeah. So you got that, so I'll let go. And I'll hold that. You feed it down that way. You hold it at the end. You go at the end? Yeah. So hold it with your thumb. It's just the string this time. Let's see. There. So we've got that. And remember we have to add a, an inch onto the end. So an inch onto the end. And we're looking at here. So cut there for me. Because this is a rubbish, we need new ones. <laughs> so there you go, we've got the string 
as a tech play. Right, so we've got our length of string we need and we've unrolled the um, brake pipe out and there's, I was going to say as straight a line as I can but that'll do. So what we're going to do is we need to measure the exact length now so we're just going to hold the string against the brake pipe. It's not going to matter if it's slightly off because the the pipe does bend by hand, right? If you can feed it down. Okay. And when you get to the bottom, just hold that place on the brake pipe. You got it? Yeah. So it doesn't matter about the string, just keep your finger there. Okay. Oh, why I've got the stairs on. Yeah, and I'm going to have to mark it. Mm. Right, so where is it? Yeah, where my fingers are. What about here? Yeah. There you go, so that's now I've got a mark there. We're just going to double check it just to be sure before we cut anything. Right, so the pipe's cut to size, we just need to flare both ends now and get the brake unions on, so... Do you know what flaring means? Yeah. What? Uh, you put the thing on the end... Ah, uh, no. No, you put the thing on the end. So look, here's the here's the brake, brake union, okay? This attaches to the other bits of the brake pipe. Goes on. Right, so if that's attached the other bit, on here, right? And if you pull that pipe downwards, what happens? Pull it down. That comes off and you have no brakes because the brake fluid's gone everywhere. So, flare in the end basically means to get this end on a flare to stop this coming off. Like, that's all it mm -hmm. Like this one here. So you see at the end? Yeah. So that can't come off. What if it slips downwards? It won't because it's it's good question, but this bit's screwed onto something here so it holds oh, it in place okay. there. Okay. Yeah. So let's get this flared. Right. Brake pipe flaring. Basically shaping the ends so that the union stays on. I'm not going to go over every flare because that's a full episode in itself and there's plenty of YouTube videos on that. So what I'm going to focus on is the flares that are used on the Mini. So the first one for a male brake union is the bubble flare. And I'll show you how to do that. This is a handy brake flare tool the Clark one I showed you and um, because it goes in the vice here and it's easy with me for using one hand so there's two sides this side you can see has got the indent here the other side is flat for the bubble flare we need the flat side so I'll put the union on first, so as if I was doing it in the car. The pipe end goes through this end here, the hole. Depending on what size the pipe, depends on what size the hole to go through on this flaring tool. It sits about 5mm above. And then it needs to tighten so that it grips, but not tighten so it crushes. Just by practicing, you'll get a you'll get a feel for how much to do, and that's why it's always good to use um, the scrap pipe to practice on first. So once you're happy, you've got that in place. Got the little die, pointy end, and indent end indented end, the pointy end sits in the pipe the um, tool here goes over the top so that the pipe fits in here and 
and you'll feel when it starts crushing the end of the pipe. Just do it till you know you're getting to the tight bit. Again by practicing you'll know. So it's getting pretty tight there. Let me just loosen it off. There's your bubble flare. Straightforward as that. And the reason it's shaped on a bubble here is for when it screws onto the female union, you can see the shape in there is the same shape as the out of here, so it sits in like this. So now the flare for the female brake union. I'm just going to use the other end of this pipe here. So similar procedure as before, but we're using the side with the indent or the chamfered edge if you like. Goes through. book I've got here says it's to be 0.5 of a mil level over here so we'll go with that it's all about getting practice that's how you do this so tighten down again without crushing don't need the die this time this just goes straight on. And there you go. Slightly different. You can see this edge here. And we can see how it fits into the pipe there. And that's basically the two flares used on the Mini. Here's the brake pipe being made up. There's the new unions there, the new flares on the end here. So once I got the right length, all I done was use the old one as a rough template. It might need adjusting when it's on there, but the good thing with using the copper pipe is it's um, very easy to bend by hand. So there we go, one made up pipe. So now that we've done the brake pipes, we're going to be doing the brake shields and the calipers. Right, let's get these brake calipers on the car. I got um, these to go on. Goodridge braided hoses. They look and feel <clears throat> really good actually. So I've got these for the front and for the back. They need to be screwed onto the calipers first because they turn in the way, whereas this end here just pushes through. <clears throat> so if you put that end on first, if you think and tie it in, if you bolt it in place, then you know you can't turn it to screw it on here, so <clears throat> don't make that mistake.
Right, we're now going to put the brake caliper and the disc shield on this side here. So this sits in this orientation here, goes in like that, but as you can see it's quite fiddly to try and get that over without scratching any paint or anything. I could take these off, fiddle about, get it back in there, but <clears throat> because I've not fully torqued this up yet, I can just take this off, slide this off and then slide that back on. So, do I take that off and do the nut? There you go, just stick it on there so we don't lose it. And just pull this towards you gently. No, no, this. Wiggle and pull it. Might be easier if you do this bit. Okay. Right, let me try. And a little bit of persuasion and two hands would be great. Right, you would try as well. We'll both try. Just watch we don't lose the balance on this, okay? Right, okay, pull it towards me. Ready? Go. Thing was <laughs> How is that? No. Right, so what we're going to do, let's stick this there. I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. So this attaches here. Right, here. so there you go. You see how that sits there? So that sits on here. That sits on here. And the brake caliper slides in here and the bolts go through and hold it on there. But while I've got that there, do you want to lift that back up? This? Yep. No, no, the disc. There's a cut portion there. Slide that on. Where? Other way. See? See how you know because this bit lines in with the bit in here. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now the bolt. Remember what that's called? Castle mark. Well done. You remember things better than me. So we'll do it finger tight, we can torque it up later. Right, so sits there. Got the caliper, do it past the caliper. So this goes on here. And you see how it slides over? Goes in between there. Can so you see that? Mm -hmm. so.
So that's the caliper end on. This bit here we seen coming off. Right, so the flexi hose on the left hand side simply goes through here. Okay. Okay, I'll put this on first. So the first thing that goes on is a shake proof washer. And then the nut goes over that. Right, we're just going to tighten up this bolt. I'm going to hold it underneath while my boy tightens it on the top, just so it doesn't twist the flexible underneath. Right, we're going to stick the other side on and then we'll come back to you. But that's the brake calipers in and the flexi hoses in on both sides, so yet another step closer. We're now going to be installing the brake pads. Right, so we're going to fit the brake pads here. I fit them on the other side, as you can see. Hummed and hawed whether to do it or just whether to leave them until it went in the car. My main concern is. <clears throat> I didn't want it scratching the desk or rattling about, but when I fitted these ones here, they're actually quite tight. And what I'm going to do is, inside here from this side, I'm going to put a, just a small tissue in just to protect the discs. Not that they're going to get rattled about anyway, so that's my reason for doing that. I just want this to be complete, so I can put it away somewhere, and when it's ready to go in the car, it's ready. I don't have to remember things or look for parts later down the line, so that's my theory behind that. So I've done that side, I'm going to do this side. I can't believe the size of these things. Look at them. I like they've come off a bike or something. But pads, retaining clip, pins and retaining clip, copper grease, pliers and that's it. Right, copper grease on the back just to stop it squeaking when it goes on the car. It's not a great amount, just And that's for both parts. It should sit in enough until you get the retainer plate on. Right, retaining clip, you know which way it goes. This side faces in the way so that these clips can sit on here once they're through. So it can be fiddly depending on if they want to sit in place or not, which this one doesn't seem to want to. Pins just go through here. Sometimes it'll go straight through like that, sometimes it'll just need a slight tap by a hammer. So that's the pins all the way through. These ends just need bent back just to stop them um, shaking loose. Really happy with that, and that's as easy as it is.
there you go, both um, discs installed. You can see the slight gap here, this is where I'm going to put the tissue in just to stop it um, rubbing or catching. So, yep, yeah, just down there I'll put something in to stop it. Just leave any marks on here. The um, piston's not compressed, so it's not going to seize or anything like that, so, yep. And finally, we need to attach it all together with the brake pipe. Right, so we're going to fit the two-way union and banjo bolt onto here. So, this, if you can see it closely, isn't symmetrical. It's got one that slopes upwards and one that's more flat. The one that slopes upwards faces this way because the pipe can basically the pipe coming down doesn't have to bend at such an angle and restrict the flow, that's why that is. So just be careful you get that one right there. So that sits there. Like that when it goes on. It's connected by banjo bolt and these two washers. These are gasket washers or crush washers, they Basically crush down with the bolt and give it a air tight and liquid tight seal. So from the top, the crush washers are different sizes. The reason being one has to fit around this top lip here, so that goes over there. goes through here and this goes on here and it gets screwed on here And then it just gets tightened down at that. I've put the two new brake pipe clips on, just um, hold them in place and just tap in gently with a rubber mallet to get them in there. So it's now ready for the new brake pipe to be offered up and screwed on. This is where you find out how good your measurements were or how bad they were. So. Getting them in hand tight first on both the bits. Make sure you're not cross threading obviously. So once you've got them hand tight and tight you can shape this um, pipe a bit better so it fits in and looks a bit neater. So there we have it, there's the left to the right hand brake hose in. Sitting pretty good. It's all tightened up. You need to be careful when you're doing this so that these, you know, you can't do this at a right angle, 90 degrees, because it'll just cut off the brake. Sure, if you spend loads of time, you can get the proper bending tools and have this looking perfect, but I'm happy with this. Um, I've made it come round here a bit better than when it came off. When it came off, it cut across here, so it just sits a bit neater. There we go, we got quite a bit done in that video quite a bit um, further forward in the project, or the front subframe project anyway. A few bits and pieces to finish it off, just like say greasing the nipples up and torquing the bolts and adding a few bits and pieces like the gearbox steady bar here and the battery cable. I'm just waiting on a few parts coming before I can do any of that so I'll get on with that next time. I also need to put the pipe that goes on from here to the brake compensator. I've just put some tape over here just now to stop any dirt getting in. Right, maybe I can pick, pick some of the brains out there just from my own curiosity. This is the cable here that goes from the two-way union to the brake compensator, so it would sit like this when it's in the car. So this has got different unions on it. This is the 716th Imperial and this is the 10 mil metric. My curiosity was 
why is this joining union here, why is it two pipes instead of one? Is it down to access when everything's in, replacing it, or is there some other reason? So if anyone knows why this isn't just one pipe, let me know. And let anyone else out there that doesn't know know, because it's just one of those little things that I'm curious, is there a reason? So yep, let me know your thoughts. Thanks. Thanks for everyone who watched this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Yep, thanks everyone. We enjoyed it and it's freezing in this garage, so I think there's a seagull attacking outside as we speak. Yep, we um, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something from it. The next video, the front subframe will be finished um, and we can move on to something else which I'm looking forward to. Uh, it's nice that it's done it, it can just be put aside and we're ready to use it when it comes to the time. So thanks again, thanks for your comments, thanks for your support. Please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye.